If you perhaps are joining us for the very first time ever, we especially welcome you. RTO is a unique gathering where radical prayer and radical love can be experienced by all who attend, regardless of your color, class, culture, crisis, or crime. We're coming to you tonight from the ministry offices in Wheaton, Illinois, on Barbara Mill, and behind the scenes we have Heather King and Manny Mill. Whether you've called in or are using your computer or some other device, we are so grateful that you joined us. And just if you wanna make sure, are we really at RTO? Let me check and see if I can give you some evidence that yes, we are at RTO. Up, oh, there it is. The jello is on the dessert table. So that must mean, must mean that this is RTO. Thank you, Janice and Fred, for the jello on the dessert table. That's virtual jello, folks. Hope that uh, you have some near your home. So, let's see. What was next on my list? Now, I do want to review just a few travel tips for us while we've got place people that are coming in and um, a couple things. Don't fret, we're all learning to use our devices. Be sure to check out the toolbars that are at the bottom of your screen. We discovered that on some mobile phones, if you swipe up, you will see your toolbar. That's a new thing we're learning. Um, the worst case is, is that you get disconnected. I will let you back in uh, when you come, just call back in. Everyone is muted now so that uh, we're blocking out any interfering noise. When we switch from one speaker to another, there may be a little audio delay, so don't worry about that. If you are using on a computer, you should be able to see everybody in gallery form, swipe left, swipe right, and you'll see if you're using a phone, you can do that too, swipe left, swipe right, and you'll be able to see everybody. For those that are only calling in, and we know you're with us, um, we just want you to know that we are so glad that you have called in and joined us too. And again, if you just joined us by audio, I flashed up a picture of Janice Mandolini's famous jello salads on the dessert table there. So that's what I did a few minutes ago. One last thing, if you are hearing any kind of feedback, the volume on your device may be set too high. So try lowering that volume as well as making sure that you're not near any radios or other Bluetooth devices. If you have Bluetooth turned on, you may be picking up some signals from other devices. So um, I do see Ben Evangelista in the group. And Ben, I am going to unmute you and just ask you to say hi to everybody. Oh, hi, everybody. This was. <laughs> It's great to see uh, everybody's face, be with everybody tonight. Uh, you know, RTO over the last seven years or more has become a family for me, second family. And um, I think I can count maybe on one hand how many I've, I've missed. And it's, uh, it's great to be in this uh, media format to still have the family together. And... Mm -hmm. um, uh, man can certainly be creative, and uh, God created it all. And the way we use it tonight is just a beautiful testament to be able to stay together and uh, be together and hear God's word together and pray together and uh, sing together. Uh, it's just beautiful um, to see everybody and be with everybody and uh, be in Christ together. So. Thank you, Ben. It is good to be with you. Are you and Cindy doing well, hanging out together? Or I guess Cindy still gets to go to work at the bank, right? She's still at work, yes. Um, it's Ross's birthday today, our oldest son's birthday, so she is out getting something for him. But yeah, she, we're, 
persevering. Okay. Uh, time together brings up uh, challenging situations, and mm -hmm. uh, we persevere. That was what our second P our second Peter's prayer scripture was all about today. Wonderful. And um, yeah, doing good. Thanks. Good. Good. Well, it's good. Thanks for checking in with us then. And I have asked uh, Kathy Woods if she would open us up in prayer. And um, Kathy, let me find you here. Uh, Kathy Woods, it looks like Kathy is calling in from her car. I am, I am calling in from my car. <laughs> How cool is that? <laughs> crazy, but my son had another appointment. We couldn't hear each other. So I'm in the car in front of our house. <laughs> Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Sometimes you need to do those things. Right. right. Yeah. When you don't have enough space, that works. Oh, well, um, thank you for doing yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. I'm grateful. Are you holding up well? I am holding up very well. Yeah. I'm a little introvert, so this is kind of my style. <laughs> but I definitely am missing people. So it's so good to see everybody and to be part of these communities that we are going to be creative the loving way, as Manny Mel would say, to stay connected and encourage one another. So I'm so grateful for this community and that we're still meeting. So thank you, Barbara and Heather, for staying up all hours to figure this all out. Well, we're, we're glad that you joined us as well as all the others. And Kathy, um, we are always delighted. We a lot of times call on you when we're all together in the room. And so that's why I asked you I thought I would ask you to ask God's blessing on our time together tonight. So would you Absolutely. pray? Yes, let's pray. Oh, gracious and mighty God, it is at times like this where we are so, so grateful that you are the rock, that you are our firm foundation, that you are unchanging, that you are loving, that you are holy, that you are good, that you are our good shepherd, that you are the great physician, that you are our redeemer. Nothing about that has changed, even though our world is changing every minute around us. And so we are grateful for who you are and how you hold on to us. We are so um, thankful for that, that our salvation is resting in your work and in the work that you have done on the cross and not on us. And so we thank you for who you are today. Tonight we come and worship you and we praise you. And I pray that this would be a night where we would again be encouraged that by the power of your Holy Spirit, that our fear, our worries, our anxieties would be turned into faith as we are reminded again to focus our eyes on you, that we see more of you as our Savior. As we look upon you, Lord, may all of our fears and anxieties be, maybe they be maybe we be given that that peace that passes all understanding because we are looking to you and father we ask that your holy spirit be present in each and every home or space or car <laughs> wherever each of these faces are tonight lord we are so grateful that you can be with each one of us you are not um separated by distance because of the the virus you can be with each one of us and i pray that each person would sense your presence here tonight that your presence and your power would overwhelm them so that they can be walking in peace and faith and hope so lord we we ask that you would anoint this evening that you would give unction to manny mill as he gives us your word and that we would be open to receive oh that we would be open to receive all that you have for us father we thank you for this season that has heightened our awareness of our need for you we thank you and um, we ask that you would continue to do the good and needed work in each one of us and in our country and in our world. May this be a time and a season where um, we as a nation respond to your goodness and to your um, authority as our king, mm -hmm. that we would know our place and worship you. So tonight, Father, we give you praise and glory for who you are. And it's in your holy son's name we pray. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, Kathy, so much for mm -hmm. praying for us. And um, we now ask that I'm going you, to try uh, another. You, you keep them encouraged in their commitment uh, to, to be first responders in healthcare. 
uh, give them energy and protect them and and just give them wisdom and zeal in their uh, in their professions and put them in a place where they can minister maybe physically and spiritually uh, to people in these weeks ahead and thank you father that we live in a country that has the level of health care that we do enjoy uh, what a gift that is to each one of us and we thank you for our doctors and our nurses and our hospitals and just the hundreds of thousands of people out there who are really on red alert right now and um, and really taking care of us so father bless them and keep them and watch over them and uh, watch over this great country of ours father mm. god bless america mm. in jesus name amen amen thank you bill for praying for us there um everyone is praying these days and people that haven't normally made prayer a part of their lives are even praying and that's the question we need to ask ourselves to whom are we praying and what are we praying as followers of the lord jesus christ we have learned to pray to god our father as jesus instructed and we use the word of god the bible to help us to know what to pray many times i'm sure you felt like i have in the last few days don't even know sometimes what to pray well the scriptures are comforting because they tell us that in those times of not knowing what to say the holy spirit and jesus are translating and making our requests known to the father and that is good news tonight we're going to be starting a new series of brief thoughts on called praying with peter Peter is probably the one apostle that most everyone can relate to. He was married, so he had concerns for family, as we do right now. He was at times impulsive and self-assertive. I, I don't know anybody in this group that would be maybe characterized that way. But perhaps he, he might have even had a habit of bad language, because he might have slipped back into that when he was accosted by the young girl at Caiaphas's home the night of Jesus's arrest. In other words, though, he was a common man, just like us. But oh, what a change occurred in Peter when he met the Lord Jesus Christ and what transformation happened after his encounter with the risen Lord Jesus. And so we want to learn tonight, learn a little bit right from Peter, and how we can learn to pray scripture from his words. So Manny, I'm going to turn this over to you now and ask you to lead us in some thoughts about Peter. Amen. Well, welcome, my dear RTO family. I am so honored, I am so joyful that I can address you from the uh, ministry of Cononia House, where we have turned this now into a studio. And I want to thank again my dear wife, Barbara and Heather, for all the work, the many, many hours that they have invested in making this experience one that will be uh, an experience that you can take with you and you can own it and you can cherish it and value it so welcome my rto family to the second second rto experience on zoom and tonight i want us to move from crisis that everybody is experiencing in the world especially here in america to the living hope that we have in jesus you know, the Apostle Peter, as Barbara mentioned, is one that everybody can relate to, but I in particular, I believe that he was at least half Cuban because he was very emotional, you know, like I am, as you know, hallelujah. <laughs> and Peter sometimes acted on his emotions, but I believe that there was an encounter. There was an experience that he had with Jesus. In, in the 21st chapter of John, when he went fishing, 
And he was mindful. He was a professional fisherman. But yet that night he caught nothing. We could be busy thinking that we know what we're doing, but yet we catch nothing. But Jesus was watching him carefully, like he is doing right now in the midst of this crisis, this coronavirus. Jesus is observing everything. He is governing everything. Nothing is taking Jesus by surprise. And Jesus says to Peter, Peter, uh, just put the net over here. <laughs> I mean, you are so close, but yet you are so far. And as soon as Peter put the net where Jesus said, the Bible says that the net was so full that it almost broke. All the people had to come and help him out. And he was able to catch 153, get this, large fish. Hallelujah. And then he had the encounterment of having breakfast with Jesus. And then Jesus asked him the question. He confronted uh, uh, Peter uh, and said, Peter, uh, do you love me? And Peter thought that Jesus was saying that if he likes him. No, 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 no. Peter, do you love me? Do you, do you agape me? But he said, no, I, I feel ill you. And they went back and forth a couple of times. And the third time, Jesus got it, got him. And he finally realized that he was talking about, do you love me? If you love me, you will obey me. And the theme of Peter, the theme of first and second Peter is trust and obey. Uh, Peter, do you trust me? Do you really trust me 100% of the times? And if so, obey me. Listen to my voice. And that's exactly what we're going to be talking about, uh, praying about. For the many, many, many weeks, we're going to be allowing Peter, after what I believe in my humble opinion, after he got that encounter with Jesus over breakfast, that that was the time that Jesus became revived because Jesus said to Peter, okay, if you love me, now you go and feed my sheep. So it is my privilege and my honor, in humility, of course, to feed you tonight. And to feed those that are perhaps joining us for, for the very first time tonight. So I want us to move from crisis to the living hope that we have in Jesus. As, as you may know, uh, this experience that Peter had with Jesus was about the year, you know, 33 or so A.D. And First Peter is not written until between 60 and 68 A.D. And who was the governor then? Who was the emperor? Well, his name was Nero. Uh, Nero was a real brutal dictator. And history says that he killed many Christians. So Peter is writing First Peter in the midst of great turmoil, of great suffering. People today are suffering of great crisis. People today are in deep crisis. So we chose Peter because Peter can relate to us. Peter understands what it means to deny Christ and, 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 and not to be committed and not to be consistent as we ought to be. But now in First Peter, we see a revived Peter. And if there's a time in history that we the revival that Peter experienced is today. To be read and pray together the verses of First Peter chapter. I want you to see the living hope. I want you to see the gospel. I want you to see that yes, we could lose everything, but if we gain Christ, we have unspeakable joy. As we're going to get to that next in verse 8 of chapter 1. This morning I was meeting with Barbara and the Holy Spirit, I believe, inspired me with a powerful quote which I want to share with you now. It is a quote that really moved me and even Barbara was moved by it as well. So I want you to take this quote and let it grip you. 
Let it hold you. Let it embrace you. Let, let it fill you with living hope. Let it allow for your conscience to anchor at the cross. Because you see, when Peter was revived by Jesus, you know what happened? He started to love the cross the same way that Jesus was loving the cross. And tradition says that Jesus, uh, Jesus impacted him so much that the apostle Peter, who is called the apostle of hope, uh, died on the cross. He wanted to die the same way that Jesus did, but he died upside down because he thought it would be it would be too good for him to die the same way. No, he wanted to die different. He wanted to die with his head down and his feet up on the cross, nailed to the cross. And he did, tradition says. So, so here's the quote that I want you to, 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 to really uh, be gripped by. Here it is. It is not what we have. It is not what we have. It is not what we have, but who we have. You see, it is who we have. It is not what we possess, but who possesses us. And I want to say this evening that his name is Jesus. He is our living hope. He is, this Jesus has to be our all in all and for all in all. Hallelujah. That is what I want you to really know tonight. It's not about possessions and material things and, and entertainment. Everything has been taken away from us. But the question is, is Jesus sufficient to satisfy me with his living hope? Do I need Jesus plus entertainment? No. Jesus is sufficient. Is Jesus period, not Jesus plus. So now, I want us to move into reading uh, First Peter, and I want this is what I want us to do tonight. I I want us to read it. I want to read it with you now, and then I'm going to make some comments on it, and then I'm going to pray it briefly to model it for you, and then Barbara is going to take us into a small groups or into breakdown groups break rooms where we will be able to pray together first peter one through five as barbara told you we've been teaching you at rto for the last few years that what we pray is the word of god so we want god the father to start the conversation we want to pray the word of god and as you're going to see in these five verses you're going to see the gospel you, you are going to see the gospel peter finally got the gospel, not a defective gospel, not a false hope, but he put his trust in the real gospel. He, he understood Jesus' blood, which is right here. He knew that Christ was his only hope. So I want us to just pay attention. Five verses, First Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 1 to verse 5. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ. To the pilgrims of the dispersion in Pontius, Galatia, Cappadocia, Asia, and Benicia, elect, elect, according to the foreknowledge of God the Father, in sanctification of the Spirit, in the sprinkling of what? Of the blood of Jesus Christ. What a precious blood that is. Grace to you, and look at the um, peace. Bless the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, according to his abundant mercy, has begotten us into a living hope. One more time, into a living hope, not just any hope, a living hope, a continuing hope, even through these times of crisis, through the resurrection. <laughs> of Jesus Christ from the dead to an inheritance incorruptible and on the fire and that does not fade away reserved in heaven for you. And as you know, heaven is not just a person, it's a place, 
is also a person, his name is Christ, verse 5, who are kept by the power of God through faith for salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. So now let me just give a little bit of an explanation about these five verses. Verse 1, Peter begins by saying he is an apostle. Well, who is an apostle? An apostle is somebody that was with Jesus, that seen Jesus, that experienced Jesus. That's why the apostle Paul was also one, because Jesus appeared to him. So that is an apostle. And then he's talking about pilgrims. You see, we all pilgrims. <laughs> we, this is not a home. This is not a home. Christ came to purchase also the new heavens and the new earth. A home is in heaven. You see, Jesus said, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Amen. So we are just passing through. So we are not to fear death. We are not to fear losing our homes or losing whatever because our hope is not in the world. This world is going to burn anyway. You see, the pilgrim is, in, in, they are now in exile. It's called the diaspora. They are now in exile. This is Jewish men and women, people that were now out of the country. That is also Greek, like us Cubans. You know, we, we've been dispersed all over the world. Every, anywhere that you go now, you see Cubans all over the world because of communism in 1959, you see. So we still Cubans, and we speak Spanish, and we keep the culture but we are dispersed we are not longer in our land now you know what i always say that i am a i am a christian that happens to be cuban so he's talking to everybody outside he's talking to everybody in the diaspora it's of course said that we've been elected god chose us we didn't choose him we didn't find him he found us that's a very important doctrinal belief here and he says that god knew us even before we were in our mother's womb, he knew us. Isn't that wonderful? That he knows intimately and he wants you and I to know him intimately as well. That's why in this era of this coronavirus, I believe that God is saying, stop trusting on yourself and put, and put your focus and your eyes on the Father. That's what Christ does. That's what he's doing right now at the right hand of the Father. And he says, and then he talks about sanctification of the Spirit. So right here, what do we see? In the first two verses, we see the Trinity. We see Peter, Peter, talking about Jesus right off the bat, giving credit to the Father, and saying we are being sanctified. We are being refined through this fire, through this coronavirus. We are being tested. Perhaps we are being judged. Uh, you could be judged, you could be tested, but I believe that this coronavirus is going both because we need to, to pray. We need to pray to the Father. What do we pray? The Word of God. And then the gospel is here because without Christ's blood, there is no redemption no sin, the Bible says. We need the blood of Christ to protect us, to kill us, to heal us, to redeem us. And that blood continues to be fresh at the cross. Then he says in verse 3, Blessed be God the Father, hallowed be his name. Who is he? He is the Father of Jesus Christ. And this Father, he says, he is abundant in mercy. You know? In other words, he's ready to forgive us even when we doubt him during this time. Oh God, are you going to provide for me? Are you going to leave me? No, he's not going to leave you nor forsake you. He'll take care of you. Even if you lose your job, he will get you a better job. He will get you a promotion. Just trust him and watch him. He wants to surprise you, you see? So don't fret. Don't be nervous. Peace. Don't be anxious. I'm getting lots of text messages saying, Manny, pray for me. I am anxious. I cannot deal with this anxiety. So what a peace we have in Christ because he is abundant in mercy that has begotten us again to a living hope 
and then he talks about the resurrection. Look at that. What is that? That is a receipt. Hallelujah. The resurrection is the permanent receipt of a Christian. Jesus did not stay dead. He was in the tomb for three days to fulfill the scripture. Yes, but he didn't stay there. The tomb could not hold him. Sin could not, could not keep him there. No, he defeated sin forever. He defeated death forever. And therefore, we have a living hope in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And it is now our duty, hope, to help others in this time of need and crisis to pursue eternity, you see. Why? Because we have an inheritance. Look at verse 4. We have an inheritance that is incorruptible <laughs> and on the fire is holy and that does not fade away. And that inheritance began the moment that you became a Christian, the moment that you asked God the Father to forgive you, the moment that you repented from your sins, the moment that you began to get healed, the moment that you put your trust in Christ, the moment that you were washed in Christ's precious blood. Hallelujah. Let's give thanks to the Father for the blood of Christ. And I believe that Peter is saying to us, be thankful. In this time of crisis, of turmoil, be thankful, be grateful for this Christ, for this Father who is so merciful in the midst of all this mess. Here we are experiencing community together in Koinonia. Hallelujah. And it's now fell away, reserved in heaven for you. But you see, I want to go a step further. I believe, as I told you earlier, that heaven is not just a place, although it is, because we read it in John 14. But heaven is also a person. You see, that's why I have never taken a position in eschatology, because I don't care if it's a thousand years here or a thousand years there. Listen, I am in Christ. And therefore, I am secure in Christ, you see. I be sealed by the Holy Spirit, which is here in this text. Uh, I've been given a receipt of, of the resurrection. This message of the gospel is true. Not only because it says so, because I know I was blind, but now I see. I was dead, but now I'm alive. I was lost, but I've been found. And I am living in the living hope of Christ. And therefore, Christ is heaven. Because you see, wherever Christ is, I'm going to be. There or here or over there, he promised to be with me, never to leave me, never to forsake me, always to provide for me. Seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and he will provide for you. Beloved, believe that. The theme and the exhortation of Peter is this, trust and obey. There was a time that Peter did not trust. There was a time that Peter did not obey. But after he got that encounter with Jesus and he was revived, he began to trust and obey. Next week, I'm going to tell you about the five trademarks of revival that Peter experienced. But let's just finish here, verse five. Now, this is the most amazing verse right here because you are not kept by yourself. You're not kept by your money or your finances, or your job, that does not define who you are, that does not keep you, that does not protect you, that does not make you who you are. No, it says, who are kept by the power of God. Hallelujah. Listen, this power of God supersedes the coronavirus. This power of God supersedes your doubts and your anxieties. This power of God is infinite and unlimited. This power of God is going to be used in you to bring you to a new intimacy with the Father. And Peter is saying to us tonight, listen, I, I know what it means to hide from Jesus because you see in John 21, 
he was naked. The Bible says right there, and when, and when Jesus called him, he had to put back his clothing because he was naked, and we are naked before God, you see. So this power, listen, this power is going to supersede the coronavirus and this crisis into a living hope. It says right here, who are kept by the power of God through faith. What faith? My faith, my trust in the finished redemptive work of God of the empty tomb, the resurrection, Christ's blood, the ascension, and the hope that Christ is coming back. He's coming back for his bride, for his church. So let's get cleaned up. Let's get in there. Let's rep now pay attention to you, but now that you have taken everything away from me, now I'm looking to you and let's keep it up. Let's take a radical time out and let's trust them. It says here, through faith for salvation, I've been saved from the justifiable wrath of God ready to be revealed in the last time. As you know, we are living in the last times. So the moment that Jesus ascended to the Father, we have been living in the last times. Now, when is Christ going to come back? I don't know. You don't know. But we have to live as Christians as if Christ was coming back tonight or even at this very moment. And therefore, we have to trust them right now for whatever happens. I remember coming back from Venezuela after I just trusted Jesus, scared to death, lost everything, coming back to face the music and the FBI at the airport in New York City. I, mean, I know that city very, very well, Kennedy Airport. And the FBI was there waiting for me, not knowing what was going to happen to me. I lost everything, but I had just gained Christ. And my mother told me, Manolito, God promised to be with you, never to leave you, nor forsake you. And let me tell you, that is the truth. So let me pray. Let me pray briefly these five verses. And then I'm going to pass it on to Barbara. I know that I went a little longer, but I'm on fire. Can you tell? I am on fire. I pray this morning, Holy Spirit, give me a fresh anointing. I want to give a prophetic message. I want to use your word tonight. Give me clarity of speech. I think that God has been faithful to the Holy Spirit. I want to be faithful to the gospel. He's done it tonight. So I want to hallow the name of the Father more now than ever. And me and Barbara and Heather and our board, we are more committed to love you, to love you with truth and grace more than ever before. I want to call on you. I want you to call me too. I want to pray with you on the phone. I want you to know that we have not forgotten our art, your family, and I believe that God's going to reward that. So, Father, I'm so thankful that we don't have a home here. Our home is in heaven. I'm so grateful, God, that through the love of the Father and His mercy, we are being sanctified by your spirit. And we thank you, Father, for Christ's blood that has brought redemption and sanctification. And it's also the security of being glorified as well because that's our future. So, Father, I pray that your grace will be real in us right now, that you will multiply your peace. We thank you that Jesus came to reconcile us between you, Father, and us. That's peace, to bring us peace because we used to hate you. So, Father, we want to bless you now. We want to hallow your name. You are the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our older brother. And because you are an abundant God in mercy, you have, living us, you have given us a living hope. You have given us a birth of living hope. That's what the word begotten of living hope. And we thank you for the resurrection which is our receipt with permanency that Christ indeed rose from the dead. That is a, that's a, that's a reality. And we thank you that we have an inheritance that is uncorruptible, undefiled, 
that does not fade away. That's another great truth that should give us hope. And that is reserved in heaven for me and for you. So thank you that heaven is not just a place that the person too. And thank you that we don't keep ourselves, Father, but we are being kept. We are being maintained. We are being protected. We are being covered. We are being provided for because of your power that is infinite through faith. You're giving us faith. And this faith does not go against reason, logic, nor reality. So, Father, give us the ability to trust you tonight. We are saved. Saved from the guilt of sin, from the justifiable wrath that was ours, and Christ took it. Oh, we are saved from an eternal hell from the world. Father, we don't want to be part of the world no more. We don't want to be entertained no more. We want to be fed by your word. So, Father, thank you that you revealed that to us even now. And we're hoping for you returning, Jesus, again to rescue us, your bride. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much. And recommend this video to others. I believe that this is going to be a message that we all need to hear again uh, because we want to hallow them all. So now I'm going to pass this Thank back to Barbara. You, so we can Thank you, Manny. Thank you so it. much. And um, we appreciate your sharing your heart with us. I know it's very, very full. Well, last week we tried the breakout room feature and it seemed like it went over very well. And so we would like to close tonight by doing the prayer in groups again. And I'm going to once again, let the computer choose randomly. I trust that you'll stay with us. Don't click out on us. Um, it's okay. If you're not comfortable praying out loud with others, that's perfectly fine. Nobody's going to judge you. Nobody's here to take attendance on who did, who didn't pray um, out loud. We, we want you just to join in, maybe be silent while the others keep your phone on mute. You'll have that option to do that. Let me just give us a few tips on this part of our journey. Um, when you join, you'll have the option to join or stay in the main session. But again, I trust that you will join a breakout group. Um, those that are joining by phone, this is important. Those that are joining by phone, you can use star and six, star and the number six to mute or unmute your call because you're automatically muted right now. But star and six will unmute your call during that breakout time. And um, take a moment, get to know each other because I know some of you last week were, were maybe just one or two of you. That's great. Take a time to um, introduce yourself, but then somebody take the lead and, and start praying. I'll notify you when we're getting ready to end the time, uh, the breakout, and then you'll have the option. You'll see it. It'll either pop up on your phone or something will pop up on your screen that we're ready to come back to the main session. And we'll close, we'll close with this um, tonight with this prayer time. So again, you'll be put automatically into a breakout room. I have no control over that, who gets where, and, um, but we're the body of Christ. And again, don't leave us, pray with us, even if you don't want to pray out loud. Again, that's fine. Nobody's going to judge you on that one. So here we go, folks. I'm going to ask us, ask the computer to put us... Um, I'm going to say, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Here we go. It'll be about um, seven of you per room. So here we go. I'm creating the rooms. And I think we should pray for all of the health care workers. And then we don't want to forget our RTO family with all the prisoners that are incarcerated in the state of Illinois and, and in the whole country. Pray for their health because if, if that virus gets into one of those facilities, I think it's going to be really devastating. Yeah. So let's pray. I pray, Father, that, that you would heal her correctly and that um she would sense your presence in some way and i pray for Jaden. he's um 
got a lot of issues, a lot of problems that he's dealing with, because um, a lot of teenagers do. Father, I just pray that he would find his comfort and strength in you, and that he would seek you for wisdom and for guidance. Hello. Well, it's so yeah. I trust that you all enjoyed that prayer time. Again, sorry to cut you off if you were in the middle of praying, but I didn't want to let it go too much longer past our 7 o'clock time. We want to be mindful of your time. And um, just a reminder again, we will be meeting here uh, again next Thursday at 6 o'clock Central Time. And... Um, let me just see if I can do this for fun again, give you all the taste to remember this is what we look like, what we used to look like. Here we are in the room. Um, and maybe I'll have my green screen fixed by then. But uh, for those that called in via telephone next week, same number, call again. The code will remain the same. For those that attended on some other device, same thing. You've got what you need now. You should be set to go and uh, click on the meeting. If you do have any trouble or have any questions about your device, call the office. Um, let me put up that number here. Oh, I didn't have that ready. Um, and if you have, uh, here we go. get this. If there are, um, uh, whoops, if you have any prayer requests, you need any prayer for anything, any questions during the week, you can call Heather 630-221-9930 or email us at prayer, that's P-R-A-Y-E-R -E at K H nm.net prayer at khnm.net if you have some prayer requests uh, this is like what we used to do with our envelopes on the middle of the table folks instead of that send us your emails and our group is still praying and we will continue to pray and we trust that you were encouraged and that tonight your hope levels increased because we shared together around god's word and heard from peter who suffered a lot of persecution and trials himself, tell us about our hope in our living Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. So peace be upon you all tonight. Thank you again for joining us, and we'll see you next Thursday. Bye, everybody. Bye, Barbara. Bye. Good night. Good night. Bye, Barbara. Bye, Manny. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, Heather.